effects, whether it's the perfect pouch, chiselled cheekbones, or a sculpted jawline. More people are choosing to enhance their appearance with facial fillers. But with cosmetic surgery clinics closed over lockdown, there's reportedly been a worrying increase in people administering their own DIY tweakments, much like our next guest, 31-year-old Anastasia. Well, she's joining us now from her home in Ukraine alongside cosmetic surgeon Dr Alex Karidis. Uh, welcome to both of you. Morning. Um, so, Anastasia, um, it is a striking vision. Uh, uh, why did you want to achieve this look? Uh, I love this look, you know. I was a grey mouse before, and I think this look is more, it's like, uh, looks like I'm inside, you know. And so what didn't you like about your appearance before the fillers? I was like a grey mouse. A grey mouse. And my nose was too big, you know. It was like all my face is only the nose. And now when I have big lips and big cheeks, it looks OK. <laughs> well, I mean, we're looking at pictures of you before and you, you look lovely. Yeah, um, you do. And so uh, I, I suppose, you know, we've, we've met a lot of people who have gone to extremes and then enhanced their bodies, almost used their bodies as artwork sometimes. But with you, you've gone up a level because you are doing it to yourself. Yes. And you don't think that that is incredibly dangerous? Uh, I know, uh, you know, uh, yes, it can be dangerous, but I do it with doctors. And now I'm uh, learning cosmetology in uh, online school. So you learn online and then you administer them yourselves. And are you worried that at any point this might have a sort of detrimental effect, the impact of doing this? I was worrying, yes, but I love this. I love this. And I know all the, all what is going to be dangerous, you know? But I, I suppose, and we'll talk to Alex Karidis in just a moment, but I'm almost certain he's going to say that the, the risk to you for this enhancement is that if for any reason there is um, an infection, then you could end up with a permanent disfigurement or you could even die. Uh, die, no. Um, there is antidote, you know, hyaluronic acid. And infection, it's not like this. It's, um, I am, uh, uh, everything is sterilized when I'm doing this. Everything is sterilized. I do it like a doctor. <laughs> You do it like a dog. And so this has generated an awful lot of attention um, on Instagram. You've got more followers because of your appearance. And what about romantically? Do you find you get more attention with these fillers? Of course, I have more attention with my fillers, yes. Uh, but yes, and romantic also. But I don't think that this is all about my cheeks. Maybe um, it depends on that I become more self-confident, you know, more satisfied person what? with these cheeks. And that's why, uh, more attention. What mm -hmm. about your family? What does your mum think? My mum thinks that this is a little bit crazy, yes? But what she can do. <laughs> and do you think you'll ever, ever have any regrets over doing this to your body? No, no regrets, any regrets. And I'm happy with my cheeks. All right, well, that's, uh, that's one side. Alex, a lady who is very happy with, uh, with her cheeks. And it's her uh, body, it's, it's her, her face. It's her body. She says everything is sterilised. She is talking to doctors online. She's, she's learning as she goes. So what's wrong with that? Well, listen, I think if, if we just put aside for, for a moment the um, rather, if you like, questionable uh, aesthetic results here, which is obviously down to the individual, um, you know, there's a reason why um, injectable fillers are, are administered by experienced medical practitioners, because there's a considerable amount of skill and knowledge that's required to actually accurately and safely inject these products. Now, although widely speaking, they're, they're fairly safe, um, there's always potential complications that, occur, that can occur even in experienced hands, things like sort of allergic reactions, uh, infections, granulomas, lumpiness, skin necrosis, and even blindness. In some situations, the only difference is, of course, is that an experienced injector can very quickly and accurately identify these problems and address them where appropriate. So for some lay person to start injecting these uh, on their own is, is, is madness, really. Alex, are you worried about the uh, rise in the amount of people doing DIY tweakments at home? 
Well, of course, as, 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 a, as a medical professional, of course, I, I'm, I'm very worried about this. We don't have any accurate data as to how many of you know, people are actually doing this. However, it does seem to be a, a growing problem. And of course, it's not helped by the fact that the people can actually get hold of these products very easy. In the UK, it's totally unregulated. You can easily go online right now onto a couple of UK-based um, uh, websites and actually buy your filler. And if you like, there's nobody going to stop you to inject these as well, which, again, it's, it's, it's just nuts you know, how, how this is possible. In America, uh, if you have a website and you're selling these products, you actually have to show a, a, a medical license, a certificate, uh, before you can get this. Here in this country, you don't, however, uh, which, again, is, it just defies logic to me. So, um, as far as you're concerned, really, there's not... There's very little that can be done. If it's unregulated, uh, Anastasia is not doing anything illegal. Uh, she's yeah. uh, she's um, she's doing doing yeah. this off her own bat. She knows what she's doing. Um, uh, um, you know, mentally she is aware of what she's yeah. doing and the, and the risks involved. What would you mm. suggest if anyone was thinking about fillers? Um, what, what's the best way to go about it? Well, I mean, listen. You know, just because something is non-surgical, okay, does not mean it's non-medical. Um, you know, as I said, there are complications and possible risks with, it, with these things. Um, and so you need to go to somebody who has been properly trained, who is a, who's a medical practitioner uh, or sort of under the auspices of a medical practitioner. You know, there are many experienced nurses uh, who have been doing this for a number of years. However, you know, it does take a lot of skill and knowledge to, to do these. So, you know, you always, you always sort of make sure that you're, you're in an environment where this can be practiced safely not in your kitchen, not in your living room or your bathroom, for that matter. And so, um, Anastasia, finally, just hearing that from the doctor there, has that put you um, off doing this on your own? Uh, yes. Uh, for me, it's OK to do it on my own, but I want to tell you something. I inject by myself only jaw angles and my chin. The cheeks uh, injects doctor. So you, should, you shouldn't be inje you shouldn't be injecting anywhere, Anastasia. I'm sorry. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm learning. You know, I want to be a cosmetologist. I'm learning in online school. Okay. Well, you I see, this, this, this is also a problem because, unfortunately, we're our worst enemies because you know many doctors have actually published uh, many YouTube sort of videos to try to educate the public in terms of, you know, what exactly happens when you do these kind of fillers. Unfortunately, people sort of, um, you know, use these kind of videos for their own sort of uh, benefit and, and even maybe get hold of some facial maps on how to inject their, their face. And, and, you know, obviously you start doing DIY stuff, which is which is crazy. Again. We um, we unfortunately have to leave it there. Um, it's been absolutely thank you fascinating. Uh, Alex, thank you very much indeed. And uh, also Anastasia, okay. thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. It was my pleasure.